He can hear you when you're sleeping. Doors in your way. Those of you been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Hey, we're back with SMN News and Stephanie's Rock Show.com. We've got an awesome, cool, uber talented guest, Bob Schneider. Thank you very much for coming on the show. You rock. Thanks. So, okay, I heard that you have 11 solo albums, which is a crazy amount. Do you have a favorite album or a top three? Um, I like the Lovely Creatures record and uh, I'm Good Now and Lonely Land. Yeah. Of those three, of those 11 records, those are my favorites. Those are the top. Yeah. Um, so, and I also heard that you wrote A Perfect Day on Lake Travis. Was that all written on Lake Travis? And how many days did that take? Actually, kind of the inspiration for the record happened on Lake Travis. I don't, I write songs all the time. So the idea was, uh, it'd be cool to have a record that would fit in this environment. So when it came time to putting the songs together for the record, I kept that in mind when we were like picking the songs. Yeah. And then um, there was a question from one of your lovely fans out there that how come you've chosen to keep profanity in the lyrics and not go mainstream or more like stick to having fun and I don't know, kind of choosing to do some small venues still and like play for your fans? Well, I actually, I, I don't actually put a lot of profanity on the records. Um, in fact, I put very little of it on there. I try to get rid of as much of it as I can actually just because... You know, they're. It gets in the way. Well, you know, a lot of my fans have kids and they want to listen to the records in the car with their kids and not have to like fast forward through songs and stuff. So, uh, of course, when I play live um, and, you know, it's at a bar and you have to be 21 to, you know, be there or at least 18, then I'm going to say whatever I want. I, yeah. do, I do a lot of cussing and I say a lot of shit that. Uh, um, Case in point. Yeah. I like it. Say a lot of shit. That's cool. Um, okay, and then also, so I just heard there's some Saxton girls. There's a group that came up to me that they basically come on Mondays and they love you. They're just completely thrilled with you. Do you get excited about having fans that get obsessed with you? Or when you're out in public just trying to grocery shop and do your own thing, do you get weirded out by someone that's maybe a little overbearing? Well... It's rare that I'll meet anybody that's overbearing. I like being recognized. Um, Who doesn't? Yeah. yeah, that makes me feel pretty good. I feel like I'm doing something right if people know what I look like or know who I am. Um, but I've been playing this Monday night show at the Saxon Pub for almost 12 years. and uh, But there are people that have been coming every Monday pretty religiously for some people for as long as like six, seven years. That's awesome. Maybe longer. I don't know. Huge. Yeah. So, and you've also been tied to Sandra Bullock, but then when I read your press release, you said that your favorite actress that you find attractive is Penelope Cruz. Um, we we're just wondering, do you have a favorite Penelope Cruz movie? Um, my favorite movie that has her boobs in it is <laughs> Open Your Eyes. Okay. With the second favorite being Vanilla Sky, but Which also has her boobs in it. Also has her boobs. <laughs> so anything with her boobs. In the it difference is she's like five years younger in Open Your Eyes. Okay. So her boobs are five years younger. You can tell. Uh, or the tits look younger. They look pretty good in both of them. Yeah. I like the mole. I, I only saw Vanilla Sky, and I like the mole on her boobs. I didn't, that. I didn't even notice this. I might be obsessed with her, too. I don't know. I just figured this out. Yeah. Nice. Okay, and then I want to go on this quote that I read also. God will destroy everything you love if you live long enough. Can you expand on that? I really I dig that quote that was on your press. Well, like I have a kid, and... um. He's six, so I think when you have a kid, or just getting older in general, you start thinking about death, but when you have a kid, you really start thinking about like, wow, he's gonna die one day, I'm gonna die one day, one of us is gonna die first, and uh, you know, just how sad that's gonna be for for him if I die, or you know, uh, obviously if, if for so me. Even a greater impact, because you have a child, you mean, you go away now. Right, it just made me just start thinking about death and just how everything uh, is going to end and uh, and I you know so that's where that line comes from I like so you've won 24 Austin Music Awards do you have one that kind of stands out above the rest that you've appreciated more I like um, King of All Human Beings that <laughs> no, award I like 
like that. That's my favorite. That is a pretty uh, you rock it life. Like you're good, and you're huge and awesome. I just moved here from California, and I'm going back. I want to do the music scene here for a little bit. And I come out here, and one of the first artists was your name that came out when I said, "Who should I interview? Who should I get on the show?" And you're just like this giant superstar in Austin, where I feel like everybody is in your music. They go out in the boats and play it. I, I would love to see you travel more to California and get out there and kind of blow that up, you know, more or have like at least a monthly show. That'd be awesome. Would that ever be in the cards? Um, sure. That sounds great. I like I, I, I go out there at least twice a year, sometimes three times a year. But sure, I'd like to get out there more. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for taking time and stopping by the show. And we're looking forward to see your concert tonight. Oh, thanks.